फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल एस एम लेक्चर सीरीज यूर ओनली स्टॉप टू गेट ऑल द नॉलेज ऑफ फाइनाइट एलिमेंट एनालिसिस कैडकैम सी ए एंड मेनी अदर सब्जेक्ट्स ऑल्सो यूर वन स्टॉप डेस्टिनेशन टू लर्न सॉफ्टवेयर लाइक सॉलिड वर्क मास्टर कैम ऑटोडेस्क फ्यूजन थ्री सिक्सटी एंड मेनी मोर टू कम प्लीज डू लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब माई चैनल टू स्टे अपडेटेड विद द लेटेस्ट नॉलेज थैंक यू हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी विल सी वीक फॉर्म टाइप रैली रीड्स मेथड एंड फॉर दैट मेथड वी हैव टेकन द सेम एग्जांपल व्हिच वी सॉ इन द लास्ट लेक्चर दैट इज 3d 2y by dx square minus dy by dx plus 8 equal to 0 within this limit and we have all uh boundary conditions pertaining to primary variable that is directly boundary condition or essential boundary condition so y at x equal to 0 is 1 y at x equal to 1 is 2 we need to identify the values of y at these uh, different x values so y at x equal to 0.3 and y at x equal to 0.6 now the initial part is going to remain same which we have already done for the last sum that is assuming the approximate function then finding out the values of the uh, unknown parameters based on the number of boundary conditions given so let's say we have two boundary conditions given we were able to identify two values of the unknown parameter and at the end after simplifying we were left with two values okay two unknown parameters in the equation so this is the uh, equation of this is the approximate equation after satisfying all the boundary conditions. So now what we will do is okay, we have to solve this in a weak form type manner. Okay, so for that okay, let us rewrite this. Okay, let us rewrite this in a form okay, that is more suitable in this particular method so I'll just write over here weak form type RR method <coughs> okay now this differential equation of ours that is 3d 2y by dx square minus dy by dx okay, the whole equation I will call it as residue 3d 2y by dx square minus dy by dx plus 8 now we know that since we are solving this by approximate method that is weighted residual method okay we know that it will not be equal to 0 anymore okay but it will be equal to r where r is my residue where r is my residue so now in the weighted integral form weighted integral form I will get this as okay I will also have to use the weight function so I know that in the integral I use number of weight functions depending on how many unknown parameters are left in the uh, primary variable equation or approximate equation multiplied by the residue and integrated over the entire domain and equated to 0 and equate it to zero. Now, in all the earlier cases, okay, in all the earlier cases, if you see, okay, we have done the same thing. We have done the same thing. And depending on how we select weight, weight function, that is WR, we had different methods. Okay, we had different methods. 
and we used to directly put the value of weight function and start multiplying and then solve the integration so what we were doing in that okay if you closely observe the differential power of wi the okay, differential power of wi okay so differential power of wi right now is zero because it is not a differential equation ideally uh, weight function for rally reeds method we are solving the rally reeds method weight function for rally reeds method is also the coefficient of uh, unknown parameter in the equation of primary variable after satisfying all the boundary conditions so for rally reeds method as well this is the w1 which is coefficient of c2 and this is w2 which is coefficient of c3 exactly same as galerkin method exactly same as galerkin method so in that case if you see is w1 or w2 is differential equation no it is not differential equation it is just an equation of uh, independent variable x okay x square minus x x cube minus x so it is not a differential equation so its differential power is zero on the other hand you see what is the differential power of r okay differential power of r is 2 so now there is highly mismatch okay there is highly mismatch between the differential powers of these two multiplicands okay inside the integration so now what we try to do over here is we try to make their differential power same so one way is to do that is increase differential power of weight function and make it equal to 2 okay but that is simply not possible the other thing is reduce the differential power of r and make it equal to uh, wi that is 0 that is also simply not possible so what the other thing left is increase the wi uh, differential power to 1 and reduce the r's differential power to 1 so that is that looks like a feasible option and we will try to achieve that using integration by part using integration by part so how we will do that yeah i hope you must be aware of integration by parts so integration uvd okay the formula turns out to be u integral vdx minus the bigger integral okay inside that du by dx multiplied by integral vdx times whole dx okay now if you remember this we applied for the uh indefinite integrals okay but if we have to apply for the definite integrals okay there will be limits coming okay we know what are the limits the limits for this differential equation are between 0 to 1 so if i have to apply this for this particular residue equation okay, this particular residue equation okay i will have to first uh simplify this particular term okay simplify this particular term so how i will do that zero to one w r multiplied by this whole differential equation that is three d two i by d x square minus d y by d x plus a d x equal to zero now for the simplicity what we will do is we will separate out the term so let's say i will open the bracket and separately write down the terms so 0 to 1 wi multiplied by 3 d2i by dx square <coughs> okay dx minus 0 to 1 wi by Divided by 
y by d plus inside the bracket 0 to 1 ok for the time being I am keeping this 8 inside this 8 will actually go outside the integration because that is a constant so just to complete the step 8 w i d a equal to 0 ok now ok observe these terms okay, observe these terms so w i is having 0 differential power and this d2i by dx square is having differential power of 2 and we are trying to multiply these two inside the integration ok so we will we will try to even this out okay, we will try to even this out and have both the differential powers as one so that we will we will get a good result in terms of the accuracy of, of this particular uh, integration and okay, this is this is acting as a stepping stone towards finite element method and such terms are called as okay, such terms are called as uh, the terms for which we will apply the integration by parts so we will apply the integration by parts only to that term okay uh, which is which involves the highest differential power term in that differential equation so we will not apply integration by parts to this because this is only having differential power 1 ok so we will we will apply this to this term we will call this as u and this term as v of course this 3 will be going outside okay, this 3 will be going outside the integration ok so how we will apply this let me just write it here ok of course this 3 let let 3 be included for the time being ok so it is u integral vda ok u integral vda so uh, so what I will write is pre multiplied by w i multiplied by integral v dx ok this d2 i by dx square is v if I integrate this what I will get I will get dy by dx and now as you can see being the first term ok and I solved this integral ok I solved this integral and since it is a definite integral ok this term has actually came out of the integration ok this term has actually came out of the integration and I will apply the limits I will apply the limits ok minus in the integration 0 to 1 ok it says du by dx that means dwi by dx multiplied by the same term which we evaluated here that is integral v dx that means what y by dx dx ok minus 0 to 1 w i into dy by dx dx plus 8 into 0 to 1 0 okay, equal to 0 now what we have done is we have solved the first term that is this okay, this term and applied the integration by parts and got these two terms okay, got these two terms okay, now in this entire weighted integral form while we are solving this trying to simplify this okay, this term is actually not in the integration because this term terms integration we solved and now we just have to apply the limits ok so this term is also called as boundary term ok this term is called as boundary term ok now look at this this is what we wanted to achieve look at the differential power of w now it is 1 
differential power of my primary variable that is also one and now they two are equal now such terms which has uh, the uh, differential power same okay differential power same are called as bilinear term okay and now all other terms are called as linear terms where only w is present or w and some other differential power uh, of primary variable is present so all our remaining terms are called as linear terms okay now bilinear terms are very important bilinear terms later on while we solve the finite element uh, method okay. the bilinear terms will give us the square matrix when we are trying to convert this uh, integration equation into a matrix equation okay bilinear terms gives a square matrix okay so these are very important terms boundary terms are also equally important okay boundary terms will will uh, bring the secondary variable into the matrix okay secondary variable into the matrix so these are all very important terms which we are deriving here and all other remaining terms in the matrix will be given by linear uh, this linear term so i hope this is uh, understandable now what we will be doing is okay we have already found out what is uh, yeah this is the why that we have already found out now we have also identified w and w2 so now what we want to do over here is since we have simplified this since we have simplified this we will start putting the values of wi dw by dx dy by dx okay and start simplifying so start simplifying so i know that y is what square minus a c2 plus x cube minus x c3 plus x plus 1 so if i differentiate this what i will get 2x minus 1 c2 2x minus 1 c2 plus Plus one, okay, because that one will eventually go. Now I know that W one here is x square minus x. So d W one by d x will be two x minus one, and I know that W two is x cube minus x. So d W two by d x is going to be. 3x square minus 1. Okay, so with all these values, now we will put these values back into this equation one, and so we will solve this for w1 first. We will solve this for w1 first. what will happen over here is you know if you closely observe this term okay that is the boundary term okay, what i have here is 3 okay inside the bracket w1 okay inside the bracket w1 what is w1 w1 is x square minus x Okay, for the time being, we will not derive this dy by dx. We will keep dy by dx as it is. We will see what exactly happens. Okay, so the limit zero to one. Okay, minus I have zero to one dwy by dx. That is dw one by dx. That is two x minus one. Okay, multiplied by 
dy by dx that is again 2x minus 1 into plus 3x square minus 1 c3 plus 1 dx okay minus I have this and write it here minus zero one W I okay minus this W I multiplied by T Y by D. What is W one? That is x square minus x multiplied by the same thing that is two x minus one C two plus x square minus 1 c3 plus 1 dx and then the remaining term that is 8 multiplied by plus 8 multiplied by integration 0 to 1 w i dx that is w1 dx x square minus x dx equal to 0 Now, if you closely concentrate on this stuff, okay. So, if I start putting the upper limit, okay, what I will get 1 square minus 1 multiplied by dy by dx. Okay, let us keep these three outside minus 0 square minus 0 multiplied by dy by dx. So in any condition, let it be the upper limit that is 1 minus 1 becomes 0. So 0 multiplied by dy by dx 0 minus 0 square minus 0 that is 0 multiplied by dy by dx that is 0. So all this term is going to give us 0. Okay, all this term is going to give us 0. Now we will have to solve this we will have to solve this integration and get the coefficients of c2 and c3 okay, uh, by solving the integration so that we will do so eventually this turns out to be If I rearrange the terms, okay, if I rearrange the terms, let's say this term is giving me 0, okay, and the remaining terms, remember this is you know negative sign. Okay, so when I will open the brackets, okay, accordingly I will have negative signs coming up, okay, negative signs coming up. And if I if I just simplify those terms, okay, so first what I will get is minus 0 minus c2 minus 1.5 c3 plus Next one is plus zero point zero one six six seven C three minus one point three two three C two 
okay equal to zero so when i rearrange the terms finally okay bring it everything on the one side what i get is c2 plus 1.5167 that becomes my equation 1 so that becomes my equation 1 and similar condition when I do for W2 so this is just rearranging the term so rearranging the term Similar thing when I do for W2. Okay, I know that for W2 as well, uh, being the, yeah, just write it first and then I will explain. X cube minus X dy by dx within the limit 0 to 1. Now I very well know that this term is also going to give me 0 because these terms only involve x so d is the upper limit that is 1 minus 1 0 and d is the lower limit 0 minus 0 0 okay this term is eventually going to give me answer as 0 so that is very clear to me minus 0 to 1 okay i will have to use uh, 3x square minus 1 now Square minus one inside the bracket. Okay, dy by dx term so two x minus one c two plus three x square minus one c three plus one dx minus zero to one. cube minus x multiplied by 2x minus 1 c2 plus 3x square minus 1 c3 plus 1 dx plus 8 into 0 to 1 x cube minus x dx equal to 0. Now when I simplify this okay, in a similar manner, I know that already this is giving me 0. So when I try to simplify this, what I get is 0 plus 1.5 C2 plus 2.4 C3 minus 0.25. Minus zero point zero one six six seven C two plus two equal to zero. So when I do the calculation for C two above, what I get is one point four eight three three C two plus two point four C three. Plus 1.75 is equal to 0. So that becomes my equation 2. So when I solve this 1 and 2, I get the value of C2 and C3 respectively as C2 turns out to be minus of 0.964 and C3 turns out to be minus of 0.1. Okay, when I put these value back into my equation of y, okay, that is equation y, what I get y is equal to minus of 0.964 x square minus x minus of 0.133. Cube minus x plus x 
plus 1. And when I try to evaluate the values at even points, so y at x equal to 0.3, we will just have to replace x by 0.3 and find out the value. That value turns out to be 1.5388. And similarly, y at x equal to 0.6 turns out to be 1.88. So, now as you can see, Rally Reads method, okay, where we applied the integration by parts okay, to the term which involved the weight function and the highest differential power term in the differential equation. Okay, reduced some amount of calculation. Okay, and it, it gave us these different different terms. So one important term was the boundary term. The second most important term, term was the bilinear term and all the other linear terms. So what I said, bilinear term is the most important term because it later on gives us the square matrix in the finite element method. Next important term is boundary term because it readily gives us the secondary variable. Okay, and all other linear terms are also equally important because they give us the other uh, other values of the matrix equation okay, in the finite element method. So, this is a stepping stone towards finite element method generation and it is called as weak form type method because the reason is it is weakening the uh, differential equation or it is weakening the residue. Okay. In order to apply the integration by parts, eventually what we are achieving is we are getting rid of the second order terms in the differential equation and we now only have first order differential equation terms present. So the calculation also slightly eased out okay? and we are getting good amount of results as compared with the other weighted residual method and these results are more close towards the exact method. So the error estimations, okay, the method turns out to be the first uh, method among all the weighted residual methods, then followed by Galler Kane and then followed by other methods. Okay. When we are trying to compare their answers with the exact solution answers. So that is the biggest advantage. Why it is called as weak form type method? Because it is weakening the differential order of the uh, it is weakening the differential order okay, of, of your differential equation or residue equation. Unlike the other residual methods where we were not doing that. So all those Galerkin, petro Galerkin, subdomain, least square, collocation are called as non-weak form type method and only RR method is called as weak form type method because in RR method we are applying integration by parts to reduce the integration order of the differential equation and increase the differential order of weight function and to equalize them in this particular way and in turn we get all of this which is very important to convert these set of equations into matrix equations in the finite element method. So this RR method is called as a stepping stone towards finite element method and the the kind of RR method which we just saw it okay, is called as uh, RR method mapped over the uh, entire domain because we, we took the entire domain right now. So RR method mapped over the entire domain. The other method, okay, the other type of RR method is RR method mapped over the general element. Okay, that we will see slightly later okay, in the finite element method. And that is actually what we call as finite element method. So when we try to uh, apply the RR method to come up with a matrix equation for the finite element, okay, then that RR method is called as RR method mapped over the general element. So I hope uh, this was understood. This is not that difficult. Okay. Few things which we had uh, solved in the last sum, we have referred them. So this derivation of C0, C1, then finding this uh, primary variable equation after satisfying all the boundary condition. Then we went ahead with the RR uh, method okay, which, to, which, which showcased how to use integration by part and 
make the differential powers same and get all these stuff so i hope you have understood this okay and uh, stay tuned for more such interesting content on finite element analysis in the coming lecture series and if you like the videos please hit the like button and if you feel this is important to someone okay, please share it with your friends and to, to stay updated with the content that i upload on my channel please subscribe to my channel thank you very much everyone